Hey, how's it going? Uh, I don't know why there's kind of some feedback on this microphone, but I'm just going to record like this anyway. I've said this about a million times, but I see someone uh, recently said something about it again. So I said that um, there's no way that anybody will escape death, and the scriptures say that. In Hebrews, specifically, it says that it is appointed a man once to die. And even the Lord Jesus Christ died on the cross, and then he rose again. And someone said, well, you don't rise from the dead, or you don't, uh, we don't escape death. Well, what about First Thessalonians chapter 4? The rapture passage. And the problem is when it says that we which are alive and remain. And people think that, think, that, think that that means that when uh, they're going to be caught up, they're going to be caught up while they're alive. It doesn't say that. It doesn't say that at all. That's just what has been added to the text, and that's what you've been told to believe. But the first verse in this passage, the coming of the Lord, sets up the whole point of this this last part of this chapter. It says, But I would not have you be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that you sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. And actually, let's go on to the second verse, because it continues there. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them which are asleep in Jesus will God bring with him. And even it even mentions here, Jesus died and rose again. Why would there be a specific group of believers who wouldn't die? That's not what the Bible teaches. So, it says, I would not have you be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep... Okay, those who have died before, even so, them which sleep in Jesus, God will bring with him. It means that those brothers and sisters in the Lord who have already died in the past are already with God. And that's a comfort to where, you know, if, uh, you know, brethren are sorrowing over, you know, their lost loved ones who were in the Lord, that we will be with them again. That's what this whole passage is about. It's not about escaping death sometime in the future, some mystical event in the future where a specific group of believers are going to get to escape death. Because that's what the whole rapture idea is about, is escaping death. That's, at its core, that's what it is. It's people who want to escape death. I don't want to die. I hope the Lord comes and just raptures me. It's like a fear of death or not wanting to die. It's a misunderstanding of Scripture. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain. Okay. What it means is, he's talking about currently those who are alive contrasted to those who have died in the past. He's saying, Paul himself is saying, I'm alive. The people who I'm speaking to, you're alive. In contrast to those who are dead. And what he's saying is that those of us who haven't died yet are not going to prevent those who have died before us. Okay? We're not going to die, go to heaven to be with the Lord, and wonder where are they at, because they haven't been there yet. No, they're already going to be there. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with his shout, with the voice of the archangel, with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Now, this makes people think that this is some kind of one-time event that this happens. I don't see it that way. I see it as, you know, when each individual person dies, the Lord descends from heaven. And, and that individual person is resurrected spiritually to be with the Lord. That's what it's talking about. And he's saying, we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds. It doesn't mean, it doesn't say that we which are alive, or we which are, let's see here, how could I put this? Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds. It doesn't say, you know, we'll be caught up as we're still alive, without facing death, be caught up with them in the clouds. No. He's just contrasting the people who are currently alive with the people who are dead. 
But he's saying when we are caught up, when we do die to go see with the Lord and meet the Lord in the air, then we'll be with the Lord and we will be with those who died before us. And so the comfort is the comfort of the resurrection. The comfort is, you know, the promise of eternal life and also being in fellowship with the brethren in eternity that, uh, you know, we're not going to be with them. Uh, you know, so the comfort is that we will be with them. So that's how I see it. This isn't like an all-time, one-time one event. This isn't saying that we'll be caught up as we're alive. He's contrasting, contrasting those who are currently alive at the time with those who have died before. So, that's that. God bless.